everyone. My name is Samantha Lobato. I'm 17 years old and I just graduated from CEC Middle College of Denver on this very stage. I know this may be a challenge, but let's think back and close our eyes and think about school. Think about your favorite teacher. How did it feel to be in their classroom? What did you like? Open your eyes. When I think about school, I think about my bed and two chapters of my life. In the first chapter, I spent a lot of time in bed because in the morning before school, I would lay there staring at the ceiling going, oh, I don't want to go to school. But I dragged myself out of bed anyway. I felt this way because growing up as a child with a disability was really tough. My self-confidence was super low. I believed people when they told me that I was disabled or that I couldn't do certain things. I believed them when they told me that I could never function like everyone else, that I would never be normal. But one teacher made all of the difference. I was told, disability is physical, ability is in the mind. This transitioned me into the second chapter when I would wake up in the morning, jump out of bed, and be ready for school because I was excited to go. Because mentally, I can do whatever my classmates did. This newfound confidence made me able to give a speech to 1,200 people for the Denver Public Schools DPS Foundation Gala. 1,200 people. I never thought I would be able to do that. I've had many successes in my life, but I've faced many challenges as well. But when I think about what made me go and keep going, it was my teachers in the classroom. You have faced many challenges in your life, but together we face one gigantic challenge. China has more honor students than America has students. Every 26 seconds, someone drops out of high school. That's a total of 18 students during, my duration of, during the duration of my talk. And compared to 20 other industrial countries, our graduation rate is number 20. Now, when I think about my generation's future, I think about the challenges that I faced in my life. What made me never want to give up? Believe it or not, there's a characteristic trait called grit, and it is defined by never giving up. Grit is the perseverance and passion for long-term goals. Everyone in this room has grit. Every student in America has grit because they have overcome challenges and pursued their goals when they could have easily just given up. Now, with all that emphasis on assessments, who's teaching grit? Who's telling students that when they overcome a divorce in their family, or substance abuse, or violence, or bullying, or homelessness, or teen pregnancy, that we have grit. Grit is a fundamental of every American classroom because every student has it and needs, it needs to be utilized. Instead of my generation being known as the generation with a cell phone in our hands and our minds on Facebook, I want us to be known as the generation with grit. Lilia Roman has grit. She was an undocumented student who wasn't sure if she wanted to go to college. But one teacher made her believe that she was a leader because they took her feedback and used it. This made Lilia want to keep going. She was a recipient of one of Comcast's largest scholarships and is now going to the New Mexico Highlands. She has grit. Esmeralda Aguilar has grit. When she asked the Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan, what is the one thing that students can do to help improve the American education system, he replied, students know what's working in the classroom and what isn't working in the classroom before anyone else. We're in the classrooms every single day. 
We know what's working for us. We know how we learn. And Jesse Soto has grit and would have the ability to, by using his voice to change how a teacher thinks. Taylor Betts was a math teacher, award-winning. She had, one day she had a lesson that was really difficult. She wasn't sure how to give it without giving her students the solution. So she went to some fellow math teachers and they said, you know, gave her some solutions that didn't quite work for her. She went to some coaches, still couldn't really find anything. So she went to class and she told her students, well, I don't know how to give you this lesson without just giving you the answer. Jesse Soto raised his hand and said, no, Miss Betts, don't give us the answer. We can figure it out. Within a 45-minute class period, they found out not one, but two solid solutions that worked. This made Miss Betts have a breakthrough. She realized that although she was the expert on teaching, her students were the experts on learning. Now, if it wasn't for J Jesse Soto raising his hand, she would have never had that breakthrough. The American education system now needs a breakthrough. And in order for that to happen, we need all the experts at the table. We need the experts on teaching. But most importantly, we need to add the student voice, the experts on learning. Because they know what works for them. They know what motivates them. And by asking them, we cut out all the guessing games, or are we doing this right? Is this the best thing for our students? Work with us, not for us. Student voice is a tool for great teachers. And all this evening, we've been talking about risks and rewards. Well, there's a lot of risks when we think about utilizing student voice. But the rewards outshine that. Because when we do, we have the ability to change a student's life. I was changed by a teacher. And now I want to become a teacher so that I can utilize my students as active partners in the schools. Someone once said, give peace a chance. If we are to do this, we have to start in every single class of America to use our students' voice, to utilize their grit, and to show them while using their skills, they can be the future to re-innovate and create a world that works for them. Thank you.